Hi, everyone. I am, I missed coming out to you with a vlog last time, and so I'm glad to be with you today, coming out with this vlog to you. Um, it would help if I had started over my slide deck, so let's start there. Uh, this Today I will be talking with you about some self-care and how you can start to set your family up for a positive beginning of the school year by thinking about some of the ways that you are will pause and stop and take care of yourself. And so the first part of our talk today will be setting the pace. The second will be knowing the difference, talk about what that is, making a choice, taking the time, and starting off right. Um, and as you can see, there's a, a little bit of information under each, which will be repeated on the slide deck, so I'm going to continue to go along. So when we talk about setting the pace, you know, uh, what pace works for us as adults won't be the same for our kids, and, and how do we set that balance? We have a saying in my house, mm -hmm. there's nothing like September tired. And while the pace will no, no doubt be quicker as the month begins, there are some things we can do to make sure the important things stay part of our routine. And so deciding what and how those things are and what's important and how we account for those things is a family activity for sure. And it's one we should do before anything else. So you get wrapped up in buying the school supplies and making sure your environment is ready to go for school. But you also need to be thinking about the pace and agreeing upon what you all need in order to be able to re-energize and refresh. So knowing the difference. Some of the things we think are self-care really don't allow us to recharge. Knowing the difference about between what self-care is and how you know what works for you. Because really, it's more than just extra sleep or taking an exercise class. It's more, most certainly more than having a favorite treat or watching TV or kind of numbing, come numbing out or zoning out on social media. Those things don't necessarily help you recharge. And so we're thinking about what does it really feel like when you're recharged? What activities do you do that allow your mind to shift gears and not necessarily go numb, but just really shift your focus and enjoy the moment that you're in. Self-care isn't necessarily shutting your brain down. It's really that refocus of that energy, doing something that really helps you to feel great. Making a choice. So what is your commitment and who is your buddy? And how do you hold yourself accountable? So once you've found these items, uh, is it a book? Is it a walk? Is it time with a friend? Is it regular exercise class? a puzzle, a journal, a golf course, a foliage drive, and so on and so forth. Um, what is it for your children? What do they have for themselves that helps them recharge? It might be some of the same things like drawing, running, crafting, keeping a journal, reading, doing a puzzle. And then what is it for your family? Sometimes it's hard to find. Um, for my family likes to cook together. Um, we have dance parties in our kitchen all the time. We go for walks together. Um, and those might be some of the activities that your family might identify for themselves as well. One is not more important than the other. Everyone needs their own time and space, as well as family time too, and use the buddy system. Your buddy may be in your family, your buddy might be outside of your family, it might be a friend, but if you're committing to do something for self-care, if you're committing to reading that book or taking a walk or regular exercise, who's checking in with you to see if you're doing it? Who's asking you, how's it going? Um, having that buddy is, is a really great way to hold yourself accountable and make sure you're actually carving that time out for self-care. Make this plan first. This is the plan that you make first so that you can build in other things around that plan. Um, you don't want to make your um, all of your daily items to do and then try to fit this in. This is the first and the foremost. Um, so you can have this be at a very visible place if you want to do something for your family. I um, stumbled upon some contact paper that you can actually put on surfaces. I put it on the back of my door leading down to my basement. It opens up. The kids can write all over it. It should have a place of honor. And there's lots of different ways to organize the space. And you can have a section for each person and have them do their commitments or you could have everyone have their own little whiteboard. Um, lots of different ways, but write it down and have it visible. 
starting off on the right foot. I have been learning a lot about how to do this, being positive, rising and shining. Uh, how do we get a head start on the day? The first thing um, I want to talk about is called feeding the positive dog. Uh, you need to remember that growth mindset language and the power of yet. And you should definitely be reviewing that with your family at this point. There's an entire vlog about this one in the archives if you want to rewatch it. But it's it's something to revisit before you start back to school next week. Um, there are two dogs inside of us. One is negative and one is positive. We all have the potential to slip into those bad habits and let the negative dog gain energy. Um, and there is always an opportunity to find the positive and feed the positive dog to make it stronger and stronger. And I encourage you to do this. I encourage you to talk about those two. It's a very good visual for, for students, uh, for kids rather, to think about. Great reads for this work. Uh, what do you do with a problem by Kobe Yamada. Uh, it's a wonderful way to teach kids to find opportunities and problems and really think about feeding the positive dog. Uh, and my other suggestion is The Energy Bus by John Gordon. Uh, there is a children's version too, but I've used this version both with staff and students, older students. Um, it is a wonderful way to set some common vocabulary in your family. Uh, everyone in my family has read it. The kids may be a little to their chagrin, but after getting through it, have, have really used some of the things that it talks about. So I, I would highly recommend them to you. And the rise and shine piece, I've, I've been doing a lot of research on this and I've learned that when you wake up in the morning, you have so much opportunity to build great habits. The first 20 minutes of your day can set you up for so much success. And so here's what I've learned. There's special brain waves in the morning called alpha waves. And when you're in this state, you are the closest to your subconscious, which is very, very powerful. You can actually train your brain to use your subconscious activity to think positively and accomplish more in your day. So Tell your kiddos this. Talk about this in your family. When you wake up, you literally have this 20-minute window to do some great things to help you be positive. You can try these six things. The first one is extremely hard for me, but I'm working on it. Don't click the snooze button. Uh, one of my best friends, she can get right out of bed in the morning, go, off she goes. I, I have a hard time. So don't click your alarm snooze button. It's telling your brain it's okay to procrastinate. It's actually telling your subconscious it's okay to wait on it by putting your day on hold. Um, make your bed. Your subconscious feels organized when you do that. It can train your mind to want to get things done right away. It's a small win, but you can build on that win. You need to visualize your life. It's probably the best thing you can do in an alpha state. Visualize. Tap into your mind. Talk about what it is that drives you. Think about some goals you want to meet in the day or even beyond that. Watching a motivational video. You haven't even started your day yet, so not even a tough day can get you down at this point. So if you're motivated, you'll reach your milestone. So think about watching a motivational video. I oftentimes try to send my people, members of my family, inspirational quotes in the morning. So that maybe that's the first thing that they read when they wake up. Repeat your affirmations. Have some, first of all. Like, I will make this the best day in my life. Um, you know, that might be a little hokey for you. You might choose a different affirmation, but compile a list of affirmations that you believe and repeat them out loud. Um, it's, it's a powerful thing in those first 20 minutes. Again, you're training your subconscious to be positive. And then for lots of people, keeping a journal works and starting that journal right in the morning, calling it something called morning pages. And you can definitely look that up. And maybe I'm going to even do a vlog on morning pages coming up. Um, clear your mind of any thoughts that may interrupt your focus and write if that works for you or draw pictures. Um, any of these things that you are taking a look at here, you can train yourself to do. You can train your children to do. And I think that using the next few days of the summer, which is we go, going by really quickly, um, you can before Wednesday of next week, you can really start to get in some of these habits and maybe you all pick one to try together. Maybe you all, you go through the list and you, you each pick a different one, whichever, whichever you choose. Um, I think it is, it can be powerful to really carve out a family plan for self-care before you start back to school. So, uh, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about. I'm sure there'll be some other vlogs coming up, um, in the future, That'll dig in a little bit deeper on some of these ways to have self-care. But if I could challenge you to find what really nourishes you, not numbs you. If I could challenge you to make a plan, pick a buddy, 
And if I could challenge you to use those 20 minutes of your morning in the best way that you can and teach your children how to do the same, I think we're gonna, you're going to have a wonderful school year. So thank you for watching. I look forward to next week when I get to see and meet all of the children in Groton Dunstable. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend.